Good evening, Ohio, Rosimas. Welcome to DQRTA and the Dragon Warrior Randomizer Run. Uh, today we're going to have Stags 28 running Dragon Warrior Randomizer on our standard racing flags. Uh, I'm Velu V, and I'm excited to show off this, uh, what I consider uh, the best remake of Dragon Warrior 1. Uh, I have a lot of fun with it. Stags, um, anything you want to say before we uh, get started with uh, this, uh, this interesting seed? Uh, you know, I'm just, I'm really curious what uh, horrible stuff is going to randomize our way. Absolutely. So uh, as we get going, we'll uh, let you know all the things that are randomized in this. Um, but yeah, Stags will go ahead and uh, get set up with his, uh, his character build. Uh, now one of the changes in the Dragon Warrior randomizer, just like in uh, Dragon Warrior, uh, the characters in your first four, uh, or the first four characters of your name will determine your build. And uh, Stags is using a strength and uh, I believe this is a strength hit points build. Uh, is that right, Stags? Yeah, I think it is off the top of my head. Yeah, so Big Z is a, is a strength hit point build. Now, in uh, the randomizer, in, in vanilla, it, there's like a span. It can be like a plus one, a plus two, or a plus three. In randomizer, it's just they're all a plus three of whatever that build is going to be. And uh, yeah, I think we're ready to go ahead and kick it off. I'll give you a little countdown here if you want. Let's do it in Perfect. five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, so, you know, we're starting off in uh, Tentagel here, and uh, the king is going to set us off on our mission to defeat the Dragon Lord. Uh, now, just like in the vanilla game, to, to do that, you have to get to Charlotte Castle and collect a few key items. Uh, you're going to need the, uh, the Silver Harp, which you'll trade in for the Staff of Rain. Uh, you're also going to need to get Erdrick's token, and you're going to need to get... Uh, what is that third item? We got the token, we got the harp, and we've got the, uh... Stones the, of Sunlight. The, what's that? Yeah, the Stones of Sunlight, that's right. Um, those can be in any chest in the game, and look at that, the outside kind of looks a little different too. So the entire overworld map is randomized. Um, it's procedurally generated, and uh, all of the key items are properly logic-gated so that you can't really be soft-locked out of a seed. And, uh, right now, Stags is doing a little bit of... Uh, looks like grinding up. Uh, what did you think about your, your stats and your character as it uh, just started out? Does it look like a strong hero or not so much? What do you think? It, it's not super strong, unfortunately. Yeah, we're taking out those, those uh, blue slimes at least. Uh, what about the ghost? There we go. Nice. So that's another uh, flag that we have turned on. Uh, torches can be thrown as items they do. Uh, similar to a hurt spell, and uh, it's good for taking out a quick early enemy like that ghost there. Uh, are enemy stats random? Yes, enemy stats are randomized to a degree. Um, or actually, not their stats, but their move set. So the the monsters themselves, in terms of their, uh, you know, their their um, typical difficulty, that is more or less the same. But you know, you might have a, a blue slime that knows hurt more, or dragon lord two breath. There was a little town hiding over here. There is a town. Towns are always exciting. Yes, now there is a flag set where you can turn on completely randomized sets, uh, uh, stats. Um, we typically call those like chaos flag sets. Um, there's a whole variety. I, would, I think there's over 30 options, um, maybe over 50, I'm not sure. There's a ton of options. Uh, to kind of customize your experience in Dragon Warrior Randomizer. Uh, but there's also, uh, what we're showing off today is kind of the standard racing flags. Uh, there's races that go on pretty much every day uh, over uh, on, uh, on DW Randomizer uh, for, for exactly this, uh, this game here and these flags. Now, this would be a huge coup early to win, and there we go. So that was a fantastic metal slide there. 48 power, 14 speed, 9 hit points, 9 magic. I, I take back everything bad I've ever said about this seed. Yeah, you, you do it all right there. Uh, that was a boost up to level 4 from that. Now you'll see that metal slime only gave 64 
uh, experience. Um, metal slimes in a race, if you get an early metal slime and it gives you, you know, some 200 experience, 255 experience, um, it can really disproportionately shoot somebody up. So in the race flags, they have what's called scaled metal slimes. And so up to eight, it's uh, up to level eight. It's a, I think it's a multiple of eight or something uh, experience or 16 times your level. Uh, for a metal slime uh, up until it gets to a point where it's in that 200 range anyway. I, I think it's actually 32. 32 times level. Yeah, that makes sense, because you've got 64 at level 2, huh? So you never try to map on screen. So now I'm pretty strong. I just don't have a ton of health. Yep, and that wolf sends you back home. Death shouldn't have taken you, but it did. Now, in terms of experience, uh, we use the, this is the fast experience, I believe. So it's 75% it's, uh, of the normal amount that you would need for a level uh, is what you need for a level. So I will, uh, I will get up a chart for that because I don't have those memorized. So the next one is going to be at 165. We got a little ways to go. I think it's 165. So at this point, are you looking for anything in particular? Just kind of poking out a little further while getting these levels? What's uh, what's going through your mind at this point, Dad? Mm -hmm. Uh, right now, I'm just trying to get a little bit more experience, hoping for stronger enemies, uh, because I have hurt more, so I can one-hit some of the really big enemies. This is this is a good one right here. Very nice. Yeah, that hurt more spell can can pretty much turn um, all of the like low end, lower end of Sherlock tier enemies and and lower just just burn them right up. So yeah, that's that's definitely a good get. I didn't see that you had learned that. Yeah, that came that came with the with the metal slime. Now, there's one town in particular that I would really well, I guess two towns. This is one of them. Uh, there's an item often hidden four steps below the fountain, and there's nothing today. So nothing on the search tile. So a little bit about how search tiles work in Dragon Warrior Randomizer. Uh, they are just like a chest. A, a key item can be on the search tiles. Uh, there's three of them in the game. There's the one that we just saw here in Cole, uh, as well as the overworld tile that uh, you, you learn those coordinates from the old man in Cantlin. And so he's still there, and he still gives out a random set of coordinates on this random map that you, you have to go and, and find. Um, and then, of course, uh, the where, where uh, Erdrich's armor normally is in Hawksness, uh, you know, in that little swamp tile behind uh, the uh, behind the armor shop. It looks like that blue dragon uh, took a took a little bite out of you, Stab. Yeah, there it's what, right around fifty percent chance of landing a hurt more, uh, and you're going to need two of them to take it down. Not quite ready for the blue dragon just yet. A um, little bit more hit points, though, and you could probably start even taking those down. Oh, I really wanted that guy. I'm right near another level. Oh, he does heal. But you could potentially burn through that. Uh Actually, the heal is really good because you can still take it out with two hurt mores with it. And that shoots up past 337 to get two levels. Yeah, that's a, a quick 180 there. Uh, get the repel spell. Uh, repel quite useful uh, in, in randomizer to get rid of things like these ghosts here. Uh, probably right now you still want to collect all the experience you can get. But uh, no, there we go. Get that repel up. Yeah, I want to get to, I want to make sure I get to this town. And hey, the monsters that you do see are only going to be ones that give you good experience anyways. Exactly. And I mean, those are both two really good gets to get right before hit, hitting town. Yeah, 
The rogue scorpions play really nicely. Yeah, they do. I think it's, uh, what, 600 is your uh, next experience uh, target? It is. So we have not found Remolder for keys, and we have... And we have not found a cave either. Yeah, so a lot of the checks that we need, you know, the, the key lock doors are still there. Um, the way you can get through those is either by catching the, the key in the town of Remolder, um, or finding a key in a chest, because there's, uh, I think, two chests that have keys in them out in that big random world. Uh, the mountain cave and the grave both have five chests in them, so they're kind of the the big treasure caves, and then there's smaller ones as well. Erdrick's tablet has one chest. Uh, the vanilla stones of sunlight cave is out in the world somewhere. It's not necessarily behind Tantagel, as that wizard says, hey, speaking of Tantagel, why don't you go back there? Yeah, that one was a little bit unfortunate. You, it's really hard to land a hurt more against it, and so, and I don't have enough strength to be able to kill it. <laughs> Thou art dead. And it's a little on the nose. But his dead can never die, and you walk again, you travel south. At, at the cost of half of your gold. At this point, um, have you seen Silver Shield uh, or, or anything uh, of, of use in stores that you might uh, do a gold grind for? Not, not at all. But I, have, I only checked one of the shops at Cantlin. Fair enough. The uh, gold in uh, the randomizer, if you're familiar with Dragon Warrior uh, and Dragon Quest 1, you know, the, uh, the original versions of those, um, there's a, a glitch with how chests open, uh, and the game can only handle having five chests, or, or rather eight chests open. Um, so it has like a counter each time you open it, it's like we've opened one, we've opened two, we've opened three. And it resets that when you leave a town or a cave, uh, and, and that'll reset it to zero. So if you open a chest inside of uh, a cave, or uh, and then die while you're in there, it takes you back to the throne room in Tantagel Castle, um, but it doesn't reset the counter because you never went outside. Uh, and in Tantagel, there's the three that are automatically flagged open uh, from the very start of the game, plus the four that are in the treasury. So if you've opened up a couple of chests and then you die, uh, it doesn't know what to do, and it doesn't flag the last one you opened as open anymore. So you can just open that chest over and over and over again. Uh, now in the randomizer, uh, those chests are between uh, 500 and 750 gold or somewhere thereabouts, as opposed to the, what I think it's like, 12 to 15 gold or something that you get in the vanilla game. So it, it allows you to grind um, pretty quickly and turns that into a, a really good strategy for getting some equipment sometimes, um, especially, you know, uh, when magic armor or uh, the silver shield are, you know, in that 14,000, 7,000 uh, range. You know, I really want to go explore, but I'm leveling up so quickly right now that it seems tough to do well that's going to change some things you know that last blue dragon yeah i saw you were, you were in that desert fighting those blue dragons for a while they were definitely doing good for you um and that's another strategy as well is in terms of of playing at peak efficiency is knowing when to stop and grind a little bit because that makes the rest of your exploration that much smoother because you've picked up those levels, you can cast Repel and Repel more monsters, um, and, and those types of things. So a lot of the, the nuance to the randomizer is is knowing kind of when to apply the gas and when to apply the brakes in terms of exploration versus grinding versus, you know, the balance of all of that. Yeah, Blue Dragons with Heal, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan. So as we see Stag's doing here, grinding happens in kind of two main ways, uh, either in an overworld area on desert tiles that have, you know, the high, high encounter rate with a good monster set in that, as each of the monster zones, while they're still big squares like they are in the vanilla game, um, you know, they have randomized monster sets of, you know, there's five, five, five different monsters that can be in there, and some of them can be doubled up. So if you've got things like blue dragons and maybe something else that's also giving really good experience, uh, you might do some grinding there. Uh, the other way that it's done is on a spike tile. So like the uh, the Axe Knight 
in Hawksmith. That could be really any of a random, I think, five or six monsters.
I go to the door. <laughs> and, and we're walking. We're walking. Are we back? Ooh. Are we live? Can y'all hear me now? Praise be to Alethgard. All right, so <laughs> it's been a while. Welcome back, chat. Uh, Stags has grinded himself up to level 10 in a desert. Uh, that's pretty much most of what happened. And then as we see down to the bottom left, uh, the lovely uh, Lock of Char. We've got Charlock uh, Castle in its, in its lake. Uh, and that's how we definitely still need to have a rainbow drop to cross it. Um, and still, we have not found any of our treasure caves yet. The Mountain Cave and the Graven Garen Hammer still outstanding, as well as the town of Rimmeldar. So I think Stax is breaching out a little bit more on the exploration phase. I'm happy with his grind. Um, what's, uh, what, are, what are we looking for next, do you think, Stax? Like, what, what, do you, what do you want on the horizon? We're looking for level 11, and here we are. Five, Five three... Three and 18. 18 is really nice. 18 magic, good. Also, the Radiant spell in return. Radiant, maybe not as useful in this flags. Uh, actually, Permanent Torch is not on in the race flags, is it? It is not. So, uh, Radiant spell could be useful in the caves. Um, a lot of runners, I don't know, Stags, are you a dark runner or will you cast your Radiant spell? I'm going to cast the Radiant. Fair enough. Uh, a lot of runners do and can run it in the dark. Uh, most of the zones just bonk their way right through them. Um, some of them do it without even bonking. It's, it's insane. Uh, um, uh, so, uh, but there's also quality of life flags that you can turn on. Um, and one of those is permanent torch. So you just always have that 3x3 three three block of light, which um, I like to play with that turned on, personally. Yeah, I, I can uh, bonk dive these caves but uh for the interest of of the viewers be able to see where i'm going and for time now that i have radiant i'm going to use it no i really greatly appreciate that uh and, uh, and i i do have to i do have to bonk dive i don't i uh, i i'm not able to no bonk dive oh you, you don't have the no bonk uh technique quite mastered yet gotcha that's a, it's a hard one, I, I, I think. Um, any monster could totally disrupt it as well. I'm perpetually in awe when I see it. Star Wavens in this swamp here. Ah. Okay. It's, Nothing it's down there, though. Very good quality of death features as well. Um, we were talking about, like, you know, you could have randomized monster stats and, and things like that. Um, it's possible to turn on settings where, for example, um, your dragon lord knows sleep and will cast it a lot. Uh, and has 250 hit points, or 215, I think. He can go up to 200 and something um, with, with that turned on. So there's, there's definitely some fun quality of deaths uh, that, that can come out of it. So I'm just doing a little bit more exploring now, now that I'm up at 11. In fact, if you haven't checked out this, or if you've played this maybe in the past, maybe a year ago or so, uh, or more, um, there's been a lot of new updates and changes to the, uh, the most recent version uh, of the randomizer. There's now um, stair shufflers, chest shufflers with all new chest locations. Um, lots of cool new uh, things, things that make spells like Radiant kind of useful. Um, whereas, you know, dark running on standard race flags, you know, Radiant is kind of a kind of a, a meh spell. Um, so there's there's definitely a, a lot of cool new stuff. If you uh, haven't checked it out in a while, um, maybe give it another spin. And we get our introduction to DL Two Breath. Yeah, hadn't you fought a couple of those drill magis earlier? You just never had a chance to do it, or what, what was that? Yeah, that was that was an ambush right there. So speaking of DL two breath, um, on top of the key items uh, that you need to access Sherlock, you you know you have to be able to defeat the Dragon Lord, 
And uh, Dragon Lord in the standard race flags is, I think he's more or less the vanilla Dragon Lord. Um, so, you know, you need to have the, the stats to be able to beat him. Uh, we can talk about Dragon Lord math when we get a little bit closer to the Dragon Lord, but uh, just a, a good rule of thumb is you want to be up close to maybe 130, maybe a little less, um, is, is, is where you want to be for that. Uh, you also more or less have to have Erdrick's armor, um, because Erdrick's armor is going to give you that resistance to the, the Dragon Lord 2 breath and allow you to, to take a couple of those and deal some damage yourself. And um, you need to heal more spell as well. So, so those are what we're looking for besides that. Of course, Erdrick's sword's going to help, but I've seen runs where a flame sword was good enough, um, and maybe Erdrick's sword was nowhere to be found. Um, so it's not necessary, but uh, that's also another thing that we might want to see. And it is possible for both the sword and the armor to be locked deep inside of Sharlock Castle somewhere. Um, the logic won't let the, the other key items be there, but... Uh, um, yeah, the, the sword and armor could be in Sharlock. Don't, um, don't you say any such thing. And that's what <laughs> deep down inside all of our viewers want to see, isn't it? Sorry, sorry, did I say the quiet part out loud? Here we go. Yeah, so Rimmeldar, this is a great find. Stags, what are we going to buy in Rimmeldar? Um, you know, I could use a hat. Um... Very nice. Welcome to the haberdashery. They've got all the hats you can eat. No, we're getting keys. Uh, these keys are going to unlock a whole lot of doors uh, for stags here. Uh, Tainted Elf Castle has its treasury and the place behind it. Um, we still haven't even seen Garenham, but when we get there, we can check the back of that. There's three chests in Garenham. There's one chest right here behind two keys. I... So let's see what we get for the two for one special. Uh, I, th I think we did see Garenham. I think this was the last town. Oh, and Death Necklace. So the Death Necklace is also a very nice get. Um, in Dragon Warrior Randomizer, the Death Necklace does not only curse you. It also sacrifices 25 of your maximum hit points and gives you 10 extra strength. Um, that in a lot of seeds um, is is enough to make it possible to fight a dragon lord uh, you know a level earlier than maybe you, you would otherwise especially if you have a lot of hit points now typically you need to get up mm -hmm. close to about 130 hit points to be a death necklace viable seed um, so we'll see if we get there or not and that was Garenham was it not? it was I need to get a little bit more gold I believe Oh, yeah, you can't even afford the inn. Spent all that money on keys, did we? Possibly short-sighted. Are you looking for any equipment? Um, did you buy anything in Cantlin? What, what, what are you uh, rocking right now for uh, I'm, that? I have a small shield, but that's the extent of it right now. So hurt more and punch more. And with an early hurt more, um, oftentimes you might run around with like no weapon until you find like a good broadsword or better. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just need a little bit more gold and then I can replenish all of my keys. Aren't you a broadsword full plates up? Yeah, pretty much best bang for your buck, I would say. Uh, uh, to answer question in chat um yeah uh hand axes early on are often a, a really good buy as well um we're i think probably well past the need for a hand axe especially with that early hurt more yeah i haven't prioritized offense just because of the hurt more it would help against the wizards but but that's about it yeah i would say any kind of decent armor is probably the the, the better thing to be looking for Large shield, definitely an excellent uh, uh, buy. That 800 gold for, for the large shield, I think, is kind of the... That can get you through a lot of seeds, especially if you're not going to do a silver shield, because it does take... Even though you're getting 500 per pull in the chest, it still takes um, a good amount of time. And in a race, these these are, you know, finished within seconds sometimes. So that, that minute pulling out, or, or two minutes pulling out silver shield money 
could be all the difference between first and, you know, sixth place sometimes. Except for when it pays off, and then it could go swing you the other way. So it's, it's sometimes there's, there's a lot of, of, of decision making to go into it. And there's, there's a broad calculus. Um, that's what's fun about this uh, randomizer, I think. Like, on the surface level, it's very easy to get into. It, there's not a whole lot of key items. Um, but when you get deeper and at the higher level of play, there's, there's a lot of considerations and calculus about it uh, to, to make those right decisions and make them quickly. I think the best description that I heard was it's not a hard game to play, but it's a hard game to play fast. Yeah, like I'm not fast at all. <laughs> Alright, so I did totally miss what was in the treasury there, uh, but uh, was it anything good? Uh, I got the dragon scale and I got the stones. All right, so Dragon Scale, of course, gives you the two additional uh, defense power, and the Stones of Sunlight uh, are one of our key items. So we, we've got one down, two to go. And a nice Druin Lord. Was it 3,000 for the next experience level? Uh, it is. Will we be checking the Spike Tile? Yeah, you know, that sounds like a good idea. All right, so on the green dragon traded for a red dragon. Fun police are out, folks. Um, this might not be good. I'm sorry I talked you into that. He let me go, though. Just a warning. He did let you off with a warning. I'm quite surprised. Your agility must be quite good. I, I did not look at your, uh, your edgy stat when you pulled up your equipment earlier. Alright, Metal Slime, duh, he gets away from you. So that would have been a really, really good one now. At this point, it would have been 255 experience, and that would have bumped me up to that next level. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Metal Slime grinds sometimes uh, pay off as well. It's just, there's always the amount of Metal Slime luck you need. At higher strength, like if for whatever reason you have like a ton of strength but you still need to grind, um, something like walking back and forth in that cave could be viable because at a certain point you're guaranteed to start doing damage to them. So the big barrier on this one was getting keys. Uh, now I can go to the back of Garenham, I can go into Sherlock, I can find if there is something on the search tile. You know, Countess, the bamboo pole sometimes is a, a huge difference maker. <laughs> like, when you're starting with just four strength and you can't even kill a slime, the nice bamboo pole in a close by Breconary is, is sometimes that's all it takes. We have our first cave. So, yeah, all right. I'm excited to see what's in here. Come on, be the jerk. Just because. Why can't we be friends? All right, so we're in the grave of, or rather the mountain cave. I don't know why I thought that was the grave at first. Unfortunately, there was no gold in the treasury, so there's not a great opportunity for a grind. You can always grind these gold men. Uh, so interestingly, in this version of the randomizer, the uh, 255 max number rule has been broken. So as you can see, that gold man now gives a whopping 650 gold. Um, uh, you'll see that on some experience as well. Red dragons uh, now give 350 experience, for example. So. Uh, some some other interesting changes in, in the balance of some things uh, as these new ways to modify the game are being uh, developed. I will take some gold though. It's relatively free.
little more gold. I uh, forgot to mention earlier, uh, we did pick up the, the uh, fairy flute uh, in that top chest in the mountain cave. Uh, fairy flute works just like it does in the vanilla game. It puts golems to sleep. Um, you don't have the speed hacks on, right? I do not. So the drawback to that is it ca costs about eight seconds per cast of the fairy flute to put it to sleep, which, again, those those can count can can add up. Nineteen power is a really nice addition. No outside yet, though. Always sad to not see outside as you kind of are zoning in on the grave of Garenham because there's not, you know, too many other places left where where that could be. Did I you would... ever check the back of Garenham? What was? What I, was I have not yet. So that's really close to start, and I only had two keys, so I didn't want to risk not having enough gold or running out. Gotcha. So I would not mind a death warp here. But there's plenty to explore still, so... Yeah, so the the map in Dragon Warrior Randomizer, again, is, is more or less uh, procedurally generated out. And we're using... Are we using the small map or the, the normal size map? This is the normal size map. So this is uh, normal, which is basically the same... Uh, what are the, do you know the, the tile? I think it's do? 120 by 120. Yeah, so it's a 120 by 120 map, so a lot of world to explore. There is also a small maps option, which, again, I don't know <laughs> the dimension of it. Maybe it's half that. Um, there, there are three sizes, I think. I think it's 60, 90, and 120 off the top of my head. Oh, wow. See, so, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's just it. it. There's lots of different ways to play it, right? Uh, you know, so on the small map, um, you know, the exploration's a little bit easier. Um, to, to find all of the places. Here we see uh, Stags has a nice, big, vast world to explore, um, and things are a little spread out. Uh, if you've got something like on the 60 map, stuff's a little bit more bunched together, so it makes this part of, of finding everything go a little bit faster. So you can really vary up, you know, how long or how short of a seed that you're gonna run um, just by some of the, the options uh, like that, you know, when you're, you're playing something, um, you know, just for fun. So that's what I like about it, it's just all the customizability and, and different ways you can play the game. Yeah, and there are a handful of groups that will get together and really prefer to play the standard way. Oh, and we can see the original continent there too. Uh, some people prefer the standard flag, some people prefer a lot of the randomization where you shuffle all the chests around into into unusual places and you go downstairs and they lead you to a different downstairs than you're used to there's there are a lot of options yeah i think we haven't even mentioned there's um you can uh there's with lua scripting they there's a co-op mode as well so there's there's a cooperative where two people play at the same time uh version of the game and you share uh, common experience pool stats and inventory So just all, all, all kinds of uh, really fun new additions uh, that, that's just come out really recently. Another Axe Knight, another 130 experience. Don't mind if I do. This is a good place to sit for just a little bit. Repelmore. Getting a little bit of uh, revenge on these wizards here? Probably not, but I'm going to try. Worst case scenario, it sends me home. Well, there you go. So now I can check the back of Garenham and then also check uh, Cantlin. Right, we've still got that coordinates check uh, in Cantlin as well. Uh, have you seen any cursed belts yet? I don't, I don't think we have, right? I have not. So the way cursed belts work in the randomizer is uh, those three search tiles we were talking about earlier, the, the one in Cole, the one in uh, Hawksness, and the one uh, on the Overworld, uh, for each one of those that's active and has a, a key item under it, there will be a cursed belt in a chest somewhere out in the world. Um, if there's... 
if, if, if it's empty, then the chest that normally holds it will be empty as well, I believe. Or it'll have gold in it. Uh, I think it's gold. Nice large shield for there, as well as a hand axe. Like large shield half plate, large shield half plate. I can I can hear the wheel turning. <laughs> yeah. I think half plate's probably more defense. Yeah. You can get large shield anytime. It's really close. So I'm gonna since I have the gold for it right now, I'm gonna do it. We've got a torch. And there's your, your your large shield money and another torch. All right, off to check what is behind Garenham in the stairs. We've got the Staff Trading Cave. So once we get the Silver Harp, we'll be able to trade it in for the Staff of Rain behind Garenham. So. Uh, basically returning the harp full circle back to where it returns. Perhaps that old man will dig a hole and he will become the actual Garen. We gotta get him his harp first. So there have really not been a ton of items thus far. Yeah, we've still got that harp outstanding, uh, as well as the token. Um, and, well, you still got the grave of Garenham, so there's five chests there. Uh, we still haven't found the tablet cave either, so that's one. Um, as well as the stones of the stunlight cave, that's, a, that's another one. So that's, where it what, seven outstanding places? Eight? And there's hawks. Yeah, hawksness and maybe this coordinate here. See what the old man says. <laughs> the man says, go and oops. Fight. So there are no coordinates in this seed either. Means we probably have no reason to rescue the princess. Um, and yeah. Dag's taking a quick death warp home. Yeah, at the cost of a little bit of gold, but I don't mind that. Did you get that large shield? I did not. I didn't go back. I have time. But thou must. Thou must not. Okay, Save okay, okay. Quit, quit badgering me. I'll go back. <laughs> I was just reading the chat. I'm blaming the chat now. This costs you the whole feed. Uh, somehow I don't think equipping a large seal, a large shield will do that. Oh, we've got the butt thou must uh, emoji out in chat. I like it. Nice emote. Very cool. So at this point, we're still looking for our stuff. Uh, Stats-wise, how is it feeling? Your hit points aren't quite there. Obviously, we don't know heal more yet, right? Um, but uh, how, how is your, your strength looking, uh, or at least in your mind? Pretty good. Sure. With only the hand axe, that's pretty good. I have 99 attack power right now. Ultimately, I think I'm going to want I have probably about... 140 when I get to uh, the Dragon Lord, ideally. Uh, there are ways to manipulate that, though. Uh, yes. So, the Dragon Lord, so uh, as we mentioned before, you can throw torches uh, to do, I think it's up to 8 damage. Uh, but you can also throw fairy waters, much like you can do in, in some of the other uh, Dragon Quest games. Um, and so when you throw a fairy water, it does. Uh, what it does a max of 16 is what is it 8 to 16 damage with the fairy water throw? Uh, it's either it's either 8 to 16 
or seven to sixteen. I think it's eight. Yeah, seven or eight to, to sixteen. But the, the max of it's sixteen, and it's essentially um, for throwing it. It's very. You could almost equate it to having a uh, hundred and thirty-two attack power for that swing. Um, except for instead of a swing, it's you throwing a fairy water. Um, so that's how you can kind of bend the 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 damage curve a little bit in your your favor. Um, if you stock up on fairy waters, you can throw them at dragon lords because it doesn't care about um, you know defense power or anything like that. It's just a, it's like a spell, and it, it always hits. So um, fairy water strats often come up, and and it's another one of those things that can allow you to dive you know a level earlier than you you might. Um, have needed, or, you know, sometimes the levels don't give you the strength that you need, so it might end up being like two or three levels earlier than you you uh, would have otherwise uh, in order to be viable to defeat a dragon lord. And it doesn't appear to be the case at this point, but, you know, levels could do very weird things. Uh, if we have a lot of HP, uh, I did actually get the death necklace, so we have options there, too. That's right. Uh, that death necklace, of course, is going to uh, sacrifice 25% of your maximum hit points for an additional 10 attack power. Um, also a really nice uh, thing to, to get. Uh, alas. Nope, no hurt more today. Where, oh, where can the item be? So Hawksness is still viable. I think your Mountain Cave is probably the the, the best probability of getting things, right? That's that's our biggest volume of chest area. Uh-oh, oh. keys? Yeah, it looks like I forgot to get keys. That's unfortunate. So do you do any mapping at all, Stax? Uh, I do don't actually uh, some people do and are very accurate about it I actually generally remember the map fairly well that's uh, good to hear that you've got the memory for it uh, <laughs> um, so it's uh, a lot of folks in the dragon warrior advisor community will map out there there as they're going or as they're going as they go it, it does help a lot to be able to you know know what directions or, or, or plot out which directions that, that you'll go. And some folks do it a lot of different ways. Some make actual like maps. I've seen people make like node maps, you know, so it kind of, they've, they've just got like little nodes with, with like lines connecting. Um, so it, it's, uh, but, but the mapping of it and, and knowing how to decide, okay, I've died, which direction should I go that's gonna be more likely to find a cave or something? Um, or is, you know, have I met all the dead ends at? Um, for me, on the big maps, it's really hard for me to remember and keep track of it as the scene goes on. I'm glad to hear you've got that, uh, you've got that, that, uh, that working memory there, Stag. Well, it's not perfect. I don't map either. That's why, that's why I'm slow at the game. I'll spend 15 minutes looking for that thing that was just right there. I don't think that I checked all the way out here. And we are still looking for the grave and the tablet cave. Grave, tablet, and the stones of sunlight cave as well, I think it's still out there. Uh, no, I, I did find that one. Oh, fair enough. And I'm uh, guessing nothing of note in there, yeah? Uh, I did get a fairy water in it. Oh, fairy waters are nice. You throw at that dragon lord there. Or sprinkle it about yourself. Who needs to do that when we've got repel? Still haven't seen any of Erdrick's stuff either, so, um, you know, the chances of there being Erdrick items in uh, Charlotte Castle are also getting, getting higher. It's considerably each... heightened, yes. <laughs> with, with each chest that doesn't have one. Uh, it gets more and more likely. Yeah. Try not to read too much frustration in that tone. <laughs> of course, Erdrick's armor is one of the most 
coveted items uh, in in the randomizer. I feel it's one of the best armors in like any JRPG. It just does so much for you. Um, it makes it so you don't take poison or barrier damage in these poison and barrier tiles. It halves, or not halves, I think it what reduces by a third the Dragon Lord 2 breaths as well as the Dragon Lord 1 breath and hurt and hurt more. Basically all fire based attacks. Um, it's got excellent defensive power and it heals you one hit point for every step that you take. Um, it's just like no other armor in any other games like does all of that or maybe there's a few but like it's definitely up there it's uh, not number one in the top three it also blocks stop spell too that's right it blocks stop spell rendering any monster that wants to cast stop spell at you over and over again just giving you free swings on them yeah it's just it's it's, it's fantastic Where, oh, where can it be? Have you found the swamp cave yet? Uh, I did. That's in the, the basement of Tintagel. Fair enough. And well, you explored that whole island, I assume. I kind of got lost in the map. I see, I told you, I, I get lost. <laughs> uh, I think that I saw all of it, but it's possible not. I know that there are no search coordinates there, fortunately. That's good. I hope I'm not planting seeds of doubt into your mind. Oh no, no, no. I'm just here to embody the commentator's curse. That's 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 that's, that's my real goal. That's that's what I volunteer for. You know, it's a role that has to be filled. Speaking of a role that has to be filled, another fun option. You might notice that the menu looks a little different on to the left. You'll see right underneath experience we've got that D. That's a death counter. Now that's also been added, and it's optional. You don't have to play with a death counter on. Um, but it is a lot of fun to, to keep track of that. 14's not horrible, but it's not the best either. Oh, we're not done yet either. Usually if it's like one of those big 50 or 60 death seeds, it, that, that happens early on, but not always. Armor Knight's not too bad if we've got the uh, the Hurt Moors to deal with them. They're a bit resource intensive, right? Ten, ten, ten of your magic points to take them down. Uh, plus, they're going to swing in the middle of your of those two, so you're going to take some damage in addition to all of the MP. You're still not swinging hard enough to do like a, a hurt more chop on him. Uh, I don't think so at this point. Maybe. You still got a hand axe that might be contributing to that, right? We gotta find you an Erdrick sword. Oh, there's a cave. Red dragon cave. Fun police guarding. No. That's unfortunate. Unfully says you are out past curfew. Time to go home. Big Daddy King says no. You, you go back out there and you tell that red dragon who's boss. <laughs> Thanks, Rando. Rando's gonna Rando. But at least you know where to go, right? Straight shot back to that cave. Yeah, there's not going to be any deviation from the path whatsoever. I know exactly the path. Exactly the path. Path, find it. A little bit of roasted green dragon uh, for a delicious 135 experience points. Don't mind if I do. While we're here, I did kind of skip just I ran straight back there so I'm gonna take a look at some of the stuff that I skipped along the way sounds like a plan Tread two birds with one stone right even if that cave is there we still got Hawksmith and other places outstanding and that cave might not even be useful 
right? It could be one of the one chest caves or um, we still haven't seen the, the jerk cave yet either, have we? No, that could be the jerk. So. Uh, the jerk, of course, is the, uh, the old man that you trade the three key items in for the rainbow drop. Uh, we call him the jerk because, well, you know, if, if you don't have <laughs> all of the stuff, he's rather mean to you. It kicks, him out, kicks you out of his, his little hovel that he lives in. Perhaps he's just misunderstood. No. Whoop, wrong button. <laughs> Maybe we have to be nicer to the jerk. Maybe he can be a jerk instead, right? We have another cave. Let's see. It's a dark cave. the tablet cave tablet cave uh has no encounters in it it's just a, a little zigzaggy cave uh, over to a single treasure chest that does not contain erdrick's tablet that actually does not exist in the randomizer so it'll it'll have something in it or um hopefully one of our key items wow it doesn't usually but this time we've got the silver harp so that's exactly the kind of thing that we want. Uh, so the token now, the only thing that's left out in the world, and it could be in a chest, uh, or it could be in a hawk's nest. Um, better chance of it being in a chest, I think. And chest areas left are just the mount, uh, not the mountain, sorry, uh, Garen's Grave and uh, Stones of Sunlight Cave. So, uh, no, we got the we got the stones. That was fairy water. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I keep thinking we didn't. I don't know why I can't register that in my head. Register it. So now I just have to remember where that where that uh, silver harp cave was. And this is this is why you should map. Yes. So with that hit point boost, I think death necklace just became viable, or it will by the time you learn heal more. Yeah, so now we're right on that edge. And so, yeah, at 130, the, the reason, because you want to have at least 97 hit points is the, like, what's considered the safe zone for a Dragonlord fight, assuming you have enough armor to, to take a hit. And that's because that'll allow you to take two maximum Dragonlord 2 breaths. Dragonlord 2 breaths can hit you for 48 at a maximum. I think it's 42 to 48 is the range if you have Eldritch Armor on. Um, so, you know, that 96 is the most you would take from two DL2 breaths. Now, obviously, if your armor is low, he might be able to hit you for more than 48. Um, but kind of 97 is that threshold. And I think it's 129 hit points is, is where it is. If, uh, if you put the Death Necklace on, it takes you down to that 97. And finally, and we found Hawk's Nest. All right. Folks talking about uh, the old man. I think of him as like, you know, did you ever see Gran Turismo? That uh, Tur Torino, sorry, the, the like the just just Clint Eastwood out there shaking his fist and scowling at like the neighbors. This is pretty much how it had to happen, I think. Of course, the red dragon it, it, is the real jerk of this seed. He's um, not even on the spike tile. That was one step in front of the spike tile. <laughs> that's just the worst. The, the pre-guardian guardian. So I think, I think that it was in the sec... In the second continent, I think that's where the where the the staff of rain cave was. Of course, it okay. could have been at the back of Garenham, and I just it was am not wasn't at the back of Garen, I think. Yeah, because we said that that he was going to take the harp and dig dig Garen's grave with it. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll run out this way. Well, you have to spin the narrative. It helps remember. I 
<laughs> I can just see, like, I do not want to run out of keys again. I do not want to run out of keys again. Yeah. Yeah. Red dragon shaking his fist on the porch. That's it. He's got his white, one dirty white lawn chair. You know, the plastic kind. You know the one. Sitting there, shaking his fist, scowling. Okay, so I still need to find the grave. Probably. Yeah, most likely the grave. I mean, it's more likely in the grave than in Hawksness. Like, I don't blame you if you don't want to go back to Hawksness for a while. Well, I mean, so there are three items that that we need. Now, if the token is in Hawksness, then it's entirely possible, still unlikely, that the sword and the armor are both in Sherlock. Right, Sherlock's got uh, seven chests in it, if I, if I count correctly, and uh, the Grave of Garenhan has five chests in it, so it actually would be, at that point, I feel more likely that it would be in Sherlock, if the token happens to be in Hawksness. Conditional probability is not my strong set suit. But we found ourselves a town here. Oh, or is this Hawksness? This is Hawksness. All the way on the east of the map. Those long flat lines let you know that you've reached the edge of the 120-120. Much rather see Druin Lords than Red Dragons. Oh, <laughs> you, you summoned him. I'm sorry. You summoned him. They call me Rydia. I summon Red Dragon. Ah, yes. And this is how the randomizer rolls. But I think we're still on a pretty good pace to, to finish this in your one hour 30 uh, with just one item left and you really zoned in on, on where they need to be. Um, at that point, it's just a matter of grinding and, and, and it's still entirely possible that the grind takes a while, but having the death necklace and the hit points to use it at this point makes it much less likely that you'll have to grind several levels to get uh, to where you need to be. Um, you are guaranteed to know all spells, including that needed heal more spell at level 16. Um, so, um, I mean, we're almost on, on pace for 16 to be a, a really good go level. Now, I'm just trying to find the grave while I'm out looking. Sorry to hear about that uh, cyber venture. Um, you missed uh, a whole lot of uh, exploration and a whole lot of dead blue dragons in the desert. Um, we've picked up, just to, to catch everybody up, we've picked up uh, our silver harp and I, I don't think we've traded it in for, or have you traded, did you trade it in already? I did. So we've traded in for a staff of rain. We've also um, found the stones of sunlight um, but Erdrick's token is still out there, as is the sword and the armor. Um, Stags has found Hawksness already, um, but he just keeps getting sniped by red dragons inside of Hawksness before he can get to the, uh, the spike tile that, that uh, is hiding perhaps one of those key items underneath it. And uh, we are also still missing the Grave of Garenham, which has five chests in it. 
uh, which is five checks that I think he's going to want to make because you don't want to have to dive into Charlock Tower or Charlock Castle rather with for the armor um, if it's out there in the, the rest of the world. Like <laughs> you really want that armor for the Charlock die. Sometimes the armor's in there, but it's uh, yeah, it's kind of iffy. Yeah, diving into Charlock for that and then finding out it's not there is almost almost as lonely of a feeling as diving into Sherlock looking for it and then realizing you're out of keys. Yeah, that's the worst. Especially on a full Sherlock, which in these race flags is, is turned on. Um, or I guess short Sherlock is the thing that you would turn on. There is a short Sherlock option, just, you know, we've been talking about different options that are in here. Um, that basically, you, when you get into Sherlock, it starts you on the bottom floor where the Dragon Lord is. Um, so if you're looking for a quick seed, it changes strategy oftentimes. Um, but it's a, it's also a nice little time saver uh, thing if you're looking for just uh, something to run really quickly. And here we go. Speaking of the Grave of Garenham, we found it. And it uh, looks like you're heading straight for the three chests at the top. We've got gold. Erdrick's armor! And the sword! Wow, Garen just maybe Garen was the Erdrick, the the like the the one that you're the heir of, because he's got the sword and the armor in his grave. So I really dislike diving the grave if it's not necessary. Yeah, so um Erdrick's grave has, you know, of course it has those five chests, but chest four and five are very deep in the grave. It's a long dive, so um, runners often like to skip the grave or do that like absolutely last. And now with the sword and the armor, we should be able to get to that spike tile no problem. And and that's a much faster check. So I also agree with this, especially since Hawksness is just right there. <laughs> Look at that. Critical hit on the red dragon. A little bit of revenge, and there's a, a little show of that 350 experience points as well. Oh, well, that was fun. Vengeance. <laughs> what was that, Dag? That was fun. <laughs> it was very nice. I bet you that was cathartic. A little bit. A little bit. All right, time for the check. Nothing. Oh no, okay. Well, I guess I do have to go to the bottom of that grave. But while I'm here... So, the Axe Knight on the spike tile, which, you know, okay, yeah, yeah I get it. Is, is, this, is this even randomized? Um, but this is also, if you have the Hurt More spell, uh, the fastest grind you can do. Um, now, the Red Dragons, maybe if you get a special combination of, of, their, of their, you know, having a heal spell or something, um, might be able to catch up to it. But, um, like, Axe Knights, every step with a Hurt More, which most of the time kills them in one hit, uh, and getting 135 experience points a pop is pretty much the fastest uh, XP per second you can get in the randomizer. So it's you're always happy to see that there, and, yeah, I, I don't blame you for just taking the level real quick before <laughs> carrying on uh we might actually be yeah that's pretty that's that's go mode that's absolutely go mode so now that we've seen those stats there and now that we're in go mode minus our rainbow drop and Eredrix token um let's talk a little bit about dragon lord math and how that works so um, there's a, a, a more general formula, but the Dragon Lord formula is, is, is pretty easy. Um, you take your attack power, which in this case is 131. You take the 100 off of that, so we're left with 31, right? Divide that by 2, that's your maximum swing. Uh, so our max swing would be 15. Uh, divide that by 2 again, that's your minimum swing, so that would be uh, 7. So I think we're doing 7 to 15. Um, is, is, is what you do. You can take the average of that, which I don't have on me, but figure out what the average of that is. Um, Dragon Lord has between 150 and 165 uh, hit points, and uh, basically you want to have enough heal mores to be able to take out... Uh, to, 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 you, bleh, <laughs> I'm stumbling over myself. Um, basically, you figure out how many swings you need ba uh, based off of how much damage you're doing, you know, your average damage. 
So let's say you need 12 swings. You want to have a, you know, a good 10 heal mores with your maximum amount of MP. Um, and you've got tons of magic points, so um, it's like MP is not even an issue. You could burn a couple of them on, on the dive uh, and still have plenty for, for the Dragon Lord with 131 attack power. I did get the token just right there. Awesome. So are, are you getting out or are you going to look for a fighter ring? No, I'm getting out. No outside spell? Nope, no outside yet. I <laughs> love it. I brought some Dragon Warrior 4 luck with me. Dragon Warrior 4 randomizer. Yes, there is a Dragon Warrior 4 randomizer as well. Um, out, the outside spell like never comes until like level 38. So I, I brought that along with me. You're welcome. Much appreciated. But yeah, it looks like we are pretty much go mode. You just need to take all that stuff off to the jerk, which is that's the jerk cave right there, isn't it? I think it is. Let's go. So at this point, the fairy water does technically out damage your swing by like one. It puts you like one higher, but it's definitely not worth the, the, the it's not that big of a difference to make it worth it to, to go stock up. Um, but, you know, the death necklace is still on the table. Are, are you thinking you want to do that, or are you going to go more for shooting for doubles with that high hit points? I'm still weighing it. Uh, it's my... Oh, no, I can't. My defense is, is too low. I'm only at 73. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. No, no silver shield. So, yeah, absolutely um, want to not use that death necklace. Uh, as we were mentioning before, the Dragon Lord... Um, his DL2 breath will hit for a max of 48, but uh, with that low of um, of defensive power, I think he can hit you for like 51, maybe even better than that. Uh, let's let me do the math quickly. Uh, I think it's 52 even. Yeah, that's that's pretty dangerous. So. Definitely don't want to be using that death necklace. Um, and with only 131 uh, hit points, I think you'd only be at like 98 um, after a death necklace. So you definitely don't want to use that. And I have, I have a lot of heal mores. Yeah, just just punch punch away. He'll he'll go down eventually. And with 131 hit points. Um, you do run a pretty good chance, uh, even though you might be taking more damage from physicals, you do run a pretty good chance of getting doubles. Uh, meaning you'll be able to attack twice before having to cast a, a heal more spell. If you get some nice high rolls on your heal more. Yeah, Rob Dragon, thank you for calculating that out for us. And yeah, the bigger risk, though, is that his, uh, again, the, the defense power means that he'll be taking a maximum of 52. Like if the Dragon Lord swipes, punches him, or bites him, or whatever, uh, he can bite for up to 52. Makes it a lot more dangerous to, uh, to Death Necklace. You know, often in middling stats like this, uh, I would fight my way down. Um... I'm a long ways away from that next level. Yeah, the my general rule of thumb, if I'm going to fight around, I usually fight red things, because those are the hardest to run from. Um, and, you know, with your agility where it is, well, I'm not sure how is, it's, it's 73 because of that. Your agility's not horrible, right? It's just that we're using a, a, a large shield instead of a, a silver. Yeah, that, I mean, that's that's a big part of it. It's definitely not great agility. Yeah, exactly. And red things, red dragons, red armored knights, uh, red golems. Actually, golems are all right to run from. But uh, yeah, the red things, uh, star wyverns, are all sometimes hard to get away from if your agility isn't um, isn't 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 nice. If I get into a pinch, I do have the fairy flute to be able to run from a golem. You can star wyvern. There's the jerk bird himself with the ambush.
No need to check the vanilla sword location. We got that already. But there goes the, the judge. Aaron's tomb was kind of the uh, <laughs> the star of the seed, right? Three key items in there. Yeah, it took me a little while to find it, but I got there. The two deaths in Hawk's Nest before that definitely didn't help. No, that, that um, you know, if this were like a race, that, that would have been just, you know, because not everybody would hit that red dragon, right? Um, and you happen to find two of them. And, and then for it to be an Axe Knight right behind it. Yeah. It, it's about as good of a grind <laughs> as you can find. <laughs> yeah. Whoever found that early and didn't see one could have just sat there and grinded Axe Knight for a while. Like, it was also kind of a, a turn left versus turn right thing, right? Uh, you know, uh, that was one direction to explore, and you kind of went a, a different direction. So, that's uh, another interesting thing, you know, when you watch it, uh, you know, all raced out together. Anyways, we're closing in on the end. Now, there is a Guardian right here. This is a final spike tile, and it's a Golem. Uh, so you do have to fight this golem because it'll it'll kick you back a step. Uh, but with the fairy flute, we should be able to take him down. And uh, uh, we are coming up on our dragon board fight. And Stag, of course, taking no chances. Just go ahead and blow the flute, put him to sleep. Um, because that, uh, <laughs> golem, he does hit, like, a ton of bricks. Because he is a ton of bricks. Being very careful to make sure that I'm on the fairy flute and not the death necklace there. I think golems were known to have, uh, speedrunners' names in their head. Um, I think that's, that's been known to happen from time to time. Here we are, Dragon Lord time. Uh, this is what we conveniently call Mash B, as we refuse the Dragon Lord's offer to take half of the world and instead uh, get called a fool instead. Now, interestingly, there are alternative win conditions to Dragon Warrior Randomizer. Uh, we don't have them turned on here, but there's one that's called the uh, Three's Company Seed, where the objective is actually to rescue the princess, and rather than take her back to the king, you take her down to the Dragon Lord and accept his offer, and you rule the three of you uh, for all time. But we're not doing that here. Here, we're fighting the Dragon Lord the old-fashioned way. And honestly, with this MP and your, your stats, I'm not worried about it all. I'm not even going to count it. Uh, if you're counting, uh, please go ahead, uh, Stags. Otherwise, yeah. Oh, no, I'm not. Yeah, this is pretty much a gimme fight. Um, so just enjoy as uh, we chop him up here. And I think I'm actually excited for this. We will probably have time to let the end credits run uh, as we'll be able to see the stats of, uh, you know, how many of each monster that you fought, how many uh, you know, your, your official final time based off of the frame count of the game, uh, how many times you cast spells, how many times you bonked. So I think it's always fun to, to be able to see that as well, um, if the uh, admins so desire to, to let that play. Very nice hit point count there for a second. I'm not talking a ton yeah. right now. I'm just being very deliberate. Yeah, I was like, uh, don't. I've, I've accidentally like hit the hurt more instead of the heal more. Not that. I mean, it's only happened like twice, but twice is at least one time too many. It's definitely a feels bad. 
It happens a lot when you, like, maybe didn't learn hurt more until, like, the level before you die. So you were used to heal more being the, the bottom one. Uh, you'll see that we have menu wrapping turned on, right? That's another one of those quality of life features. Um, the, the vanilla dragon warrior, um, you have to actually push down, like, eight times to get to your spell, whereas here you can just hit up to get to the bottom of the list. And there goes the dragon lord. Thou hast found the ball of light and radiance streams aloft and uh, a quick return spell and we'll have our final input for a final time and never even got the outside spell finished it at 15 which is much earlier than i usually get to with a lot of... with a lot of mp left yeah that was a really nice uh see yeah you had uh, like i think 15 heal mores right you had 120 point so mp was not going to be an issue at that point um so yeah get those ggs out uh, excellent job uh stags um a, a great finish to uh to an interesting seed uh now that you've gotten it all through and aren't in the the heat of it are there uh what are your what are your thoughts in there uh you know that one that one was a little bit jetty and if if i hadn't died in hawk's nest one square away from the axe knight uh, I would have just grinded on Axe Knight for a long time, gone south, would have seen the grave. It was probably about a uh, 10 to 15 minute difference there with that one with that one red dragon sniping. Yeah, yeah, that red dragon was was just the the worst. Um, but you know, ultimately, you, you did a good job of of kind of. Stopping and grinding where, where it made sense to do so. Um, picking up those blue dragons earlier on, and then um, you stopped and did another little grind a, a little bit later. Um, just it made it so that once you found that last, last thing, it literally was it was go mode at that point. There was no need to to, to grind anymore. So it was a, a nice convergence of, of of balancing that that exploration and and leveling. You didn't have to sit on a spike tile really. And the only heal mores that I used the entire game were against DL two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's right. That's true. Because you just got it right at the end there. Yep. Right uh, at the very end. They're enjoying the uh, the uh, monster count there. Um, what stood out? What was your standout monster? Uh, if there's any phrase for this this seed, it's blue dragons. Blue dragons. All right. Let's see your blue dragon count here. Red dragon fought six, one, one died three. <laughs> that was uh, that big was crit. <laughs> It tried to get me again before, or in Hawk's Nest, and I got my critical hit there. That's right. That's right. You hit him for like 114. I think I saw 17 blue, dead blue dragons there. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not. You five bonks. Your bonk counter was under 100, so that's uh, that's also good to see. Love love to see the sub 100 bonk counter. So yeah. well, well well manipulated or uh, <laughs> routed, if you will. An an early radiant with a lot of. Uh, and very, very late caves makes that a little easier. Absolutely. Um, well, yeah, it's been uh, an awesome seed. Um, I'm just going to jump into the Discord and see if, if, uh, if they're wanting us to uh, close things out or if I should just chat up. Um, any other thoughts that you have going on, Stags, uh, um, with the, the seed overall? Um, uh, or, or anything else about the randomizer or anything, uh, you know, besides... Yeah, or not besides, but yeah. No, you know this. This was a a very good example of of a nice friend, relatively friendly standard flag set. Uh, I really enjoy the randomized Dragon Warrior one. Uh, I played it a bunch as a kid, uh, in the vanilla and the cartridge, and uh, getting back into the randomizer. It's like it's like playing the game for the first time every time. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, there's a great community. Uh, a lot of people are pretty much always willing to get a race going, uh, and we have lots of tournaments and leagues, and it's it's really excellent. Yeah, absolutely. I went ahead and put a a, uh, a shameless plug out into into the chat there. That's the link to the website. It has the discords on there as well as everything you need uh, aside from the ROM. You need to. Nobody knows where ROMs come from. Um, you need to find that yourself, but uh, the, the randomizer itself is web-based, so you just uh, 
choose what flags you want and uh, click 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 randomize and, and it'll get you your, your customized seat. Um, Discord is linked there as well in, on the website, so um, you know if you want to join the community, as Dag said, I, I can't echo that enough. It's a very welcome opening group of folks that'll be happy to to kind of guide you through um, your first seeds as well if, if you're you're new to trying it out um, and, and aren't sure where to go. Uh, so yeah, it's it's uh, super cool. In fact, there's a tournament going on right now, um, so it's it's a cool time to, to go in and start checking it out. Um, so yeah, thanks uh, thanks a lot, and yeah, be sure to follow that. And thank you to all of our admin team, uh, Countess for doing the restreaming. Uh, High spirits, you're out there. It looks like coordinating all this as well. So good uh, good on y'all as well. And uh, I'm ready to pass it off uh, if that's what uh, is happening next. Yeah, thank you a lot, Veluvi. It was a lot of fun. I'm glad we were able to get the technical issues sorted out. And thanks, High Spirits, for for being patient through all of that. And and thanks everyone for getting the marathon going. I'm honored that I was chosen to get to represent Dragon Warrior Randomizer. Absolutely, I'm also very happy for that. Thank you all for uh, letting us show this off. And speaking of what's coming up next. We've got Error of Ruto is going to be speedrunning Dragon Quest V. Uh, that is a fan favorite Dragon Quest. Uh, so that is going to be starting in just a moment. So uh, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, continue tuning in as we are closing out just the last days of BQRTA.